I just thought it was quite entertaining to be wearing a little rain hat, just screaming when you come in a shed. <laughs> I guess that you're so hyped up into kind of insanity the whole time. I, like, half the time I didn't even realize what was going on. I mean, it kind of, I definitely, it's definitely kind of fun to just, you know, that your day of work is, is like, right, today what you're gonna do is walk down a cliff and then throw two buckets of into like a giant fan. And then they're just, we have to aim it perfectly so, yeah, I was like literally practicing a few times, rehearsing, going, how can you throw the exact right spot so it goes directly in your face afterwards? It's just kind of, it's a, it's a fun, it's a fun day at work. You know, we had to do many strange things because things get a little wild and woolly um, when we're stuck there and we're starting to drink and what's going to happen is uncertain. So th th there's some extremity to what we're doing. Uh, I think there's a sequence where there's like a fantasy sequence that was quite weird, where I become this kind of mythological figure and I'm spewing things of the sea out of my mouth. So technically, you know, taking a big gulp of all this stuff of the sea, and I'm talking about little periwinkles and all that water and seaweed and then vomiting it out. It's pretty similar. <laughs> you kind of. It depends how you go about it. I mean, I definitely. There's one of. The, there's one of my favorite parts in the script when he's having a. He's having a little self pleasure moment, but then it kind of. It's said in the script that he, when he has an orgasm, he lets out this kind of primal howl <laughs> to it, and I just thought it was quite entertaining to be wearing a little rain hat just screaming when you come in a shed. <laughs> and it's like, this is kind of right up my alley, this script. <laughs> to be honest, it was supposed to be significantly more subtle, but the first take, I just wanted to set a precedent for like, you know, I want to be able to go as crazy as I want to be. And so I'd kind of psych myself up into this manic state. I mean, the first take, like <laughs> tried did like a fake like throw up all over myself and then screaming and crying at the same time and I was like and uh you know he's supposed to just be having an orgasm <laughs> like, I like the idea of vomiting at the same time the dancing stuff we went to a clog dancing or something like the lesson we went to but and I've never been more embarrassed in my life doing it when I was just me and Willem and this this teacher in uh, Canada and like I don't know I just I, I was so embarrassed in the rehearsal and then when we did it in um, the scene it was kind of I mean just everything goes out the window you kind of Willem is an extraordinary dancer and I just did not know what was going on. You choreograph it so that you're sort of you know the notes, there's a score, and then once you find that score, then you play it. And if that sounds dry, it isn't at all, because when you have a structure like that, sometimes you can even go deeper into what you're doing because a part of your mind isn't making choices of, oh, what do I do now, or let's do this, or it's, you take off the pressure of a kind of invention and that energy goes someplace else to experience and be more present for what is really happening. For things, action stuff, and also like when we're fighting, it, it's too difficult to wing that. First of all, because it's not enough to really fight and find the, the shooting style of that wouldn't really support that. So we knew what the camera language was and then we had to fit into that, so part of that is really a choreographing thing so it works for the camera. The fighting stuff was kind of actually not that not that choreographed at all. I think they, we tried to do it choreographed and then it just didn't look wild enough. And so I think it's always fun to do something with an actor like Willem who kind of, you can just sort of say like, hey, so let's just like roll around on the floor and sort of play fight, but like not hit each other too hard. And it just looks so much more realistic than doing that kind of choreographed, like, okay, now you block this punch. Oh, I hate doing fight scenes like that. 
I think you traditionally wear clogs. <laughs> I might be completely making this up. <laughs> but um, I think it was called clog dancing. But um, it's actually like weirdly complicated. But and, like, and there's definitely a scene, there's a scene where I got it, there's one tip close up of my legs and I did it right for one take, I think. I and mean, then after that, it was just going, Ooh. <laughs> I mean, those farts were, I mean, Willem might have been doing them silently, but a lot of them, a lot of them were uh, done in post. And so I was never particularly aware uh, of them. It's kind of, it's only when afterwards, it's funny, you don't really notice how funny the things are until you actually see the movie, which is kind of strange. Best sex scene. I don't know. I don't, I don't know. I'm pretty glad that like, I, when I first saw this movie, I, that from this, reading the scripts, one of the strangest scripts I've ever read in my life, like it's really exciting and, and new, but uh, I don't know. I'm so happy that people are like responding to it because I just really thought, you know, I don't know, I don't know what was going to happen to it when it came out. So like, it's given me a renewed faith in making the most bizarre movies you can do. Yes, you want awards, you want a, a positive reaction because that will help spread the word for a modestly budgeted movie uh, that doesn't always have a big advertising budget. It helps, uh, but in the end, what's it about? Having, having people see it and, and being able to share it.